In this video, we are going to be looking at the connection between area and perimeter, and we're going to be noticing that there are times when two rectangles can have the same area, like these two, both have an area of 8, but their perimeter is not the same. This one has a perimeter of 12, this one has a perimeter of 18. So same area, different perimeters. Or we might notice moments like this, where these two shapes have the same perimeter of 16, but this has an area of 15, and this has an area of 16. And the reason this is important is because in the real world, you might be given an amount of space and have to come up with some ideas of what the best fit is for that space. Um, and so we've been working on some real world examples in the classroom also. So I'm going to kind of walk you through how you can be given a specific guideline of an area or a perimeter and have to come up with a few different options. So here I'm given a goal that my area is 16 square units, 16 square feet, 16 square inches. So I need to come up with, you know, a couple of different options of shapes that all have 16 square units as the area. So when I first think about that, I know that the area is I need to be coming up with shapes where I can multiply the length times the width and get 16. Okay, so I'm going to get myself ready to find a couple of them. So I'm also going to start visualizing that array, taking 16 square tiles or square units and arranging them in a rectangular form in arrays so that I can have 16 square units as an area. So my first thought immediately is I'm just going to take all 16 of them and line them up in a really long array a 1 by 16 array. And so if I multiply my length times width, 1 times 16, is 16. So that would give me a one really long array, a row of 1 and 16 columns. So here, if I do a 1 by 16, my area is 16 square units. Now if I look, though, and I think about the perimeter here, so 16 and 16 is 32, and then th two more, my perimeter is actually 34. Now if I think here, now I just think about those tiles again. What if I maybe put them into an array of two? Could I have two rows with my 16? So if I think here, okay, if I have two rows, would I be able to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16? Okay, so I could have two rows and eight columns to make a rectangle. So that's a 2 by 8 would give me an area of 16. But when I think about that perimeter by adding all of the sides up, well, this is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So the perimeter here is actually 20. So same area by rearranging those square tiles to make different arrays, but different perimeter. And if I kept going, I would actually see that I could make a 4 by 4 array and have an area of 16 and also a perimeter of 16, which doesn't happen very often. <clears throat> so here with an area, I'm setting my equation up knowing I need to multiply length times width, and then I'm visualizing or even actually making arrays to help me figure out some of those options. Now let's move over here where I'm given a goal of having a perimeter of 20, but my areas might be different. So that's, you know, saying I have a certain amount of fencing, but I can move it around in different ways to have different types of enclosed areas. So that's kind of a real world connection there. So here, my perimeter is 20. I know then that if I'm finding perimeter, I'm going to have four sides equaling 20. Okay, and I'm going to try to come up with a couple of different options of four sides equaling 20. Now remember, with a rectangle, Opposite sides are equal, so these two sides need to be the same, and these two sides need to be the same. So instead of thinking what four numbers equal 20, I'm actually going to think about what two numbers equal 20, and then take those two numbers and break them and give them to the two sides. So if I think about it immediately, I think 10 and 10. 10 and 10 equal 20. So if I take the 10 and 10, I could split that into 5 and 5 for the top and bottom, and then 5 and 5 for the left and the right. And I would be left with actually a square. 5, 5, 5, and 5 would give me a perimeter of 20. But then if I find my area, it would actually be an area of 25 square units. 
Okay, so that's one option. Now let me try another one. So let me think again. Instead of trying to figure out four numbers that equal 20, I really need to think about two numbers that equal 20 because, again, the opposite sides need to be equal. So I'm thinking right now that I could do 16 and 4. So 16 and 4 equal 20, and then I could take the 16 for my top and bottom to be 8 and 8, and then I could take the 4 for my side to side and be 2 and 2. So this is 16, this is 2, oops, no, this is 8 and 8, 2 and 2, so that's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Again, a perimeter of 20, but when I multiply to find the area, 8 times 2 is 16 square units. So here I have an example of two shapes that have the same perimeter of 20, but their area is different. So that's kind of the process that we go through when we're trying to figure out multiple options when we have an area goal or multiple options when you have a perimeter goal. With the area goal, I think, all right, I need to think of a length and a width that will work together to make a product to make my area. And then for perimeter, I need to think of four sides that are going to add up to 20. But remember, you need to have two sides equal and another two sides equal. Or like this one, two sides equal and another two sides equal, but all adding up to the perimeter. This is when you want to kind of remember that when you know your multiplication and addition facts, it makes things run a little bit more smoothly when you know factors that work well to make 16 or add-ins that work well to make 20, but can also be split up into two sides for the shape. So think about that when you're given a goal of area or a goal of perimeter, but needing to come up with a couple of different options for somebody.